Well, the last of the tests we're going to use for convergence, and really this is the pinnacle, this is sort of the, where we've been driving for the entire time. The last two are the ratio test and the root test, the ratio test and the root test. And of the two, uh, the ratio test is far and away uh, more widely used. The root test actually sort of is a, uh, 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 sort of hangs on to the root the ratio test. There's just a few little places where the root test has some special uh, uh, special application, and we'll talk about those. But the, the big deal of the day here is the ratio test. And before we get into that, I want to talk just a, just a bit about uh, a, a little notion here. Suppose, suppose we have a series, and I want, to, I want to discuss just a bit about what we mean by a n plus one, just to make sure we have all the i's dotted and all the t's crossed. Um, so, what we mean by a n plus one in the expression of a n, everywhere you see an n gets replaced with parenthesis n plus one, and then you simplify. So, let's look at a specific case, and it doesn't matter what where the where the n's are located. So, I'm going to take a, a just a uh, something I'll make up out of the blue sky here. This is uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1. Maybe it's an alternating series. And then maybe we have 5 to the uh, 2n. And then we have uh, maybe uh, maybe also an n plus 2. And then let's also throw in maybe an n plus 1 factorial. Just, just to sort of put all the pieces into play. Suppose this is our series. This, so this represents... A n. The question is, if, if that's the given uh, series, then what do we mean by a n plus 1? That's going to come into play when we do our work with the ratio test. Well, everywhere you see an n, remove it, in its place, put in parenthesis n plus 1, and then you simplify. So, uh, when we do this, we typically are only talking about this part of the expression. We don't actually need the summation symbol. So, a n plus 1 would be negative 1, and here we go, n plus 1 plus 1. And then we have 5 raised to the 2 times n plus 1. Then we have n plus 1 plus 2 all over n plus 1 uh, plus 1 factorial. And then you'd simplify all that mess. This would then become negative 1 to the, what is that, n plus 2. And then we have 5 raised to the, look at this, 2n plus 2 distribute. Then that we multiply by n plus 3. And then that would be divided by, this is n plus 2 factorial. Typically, you don't need to write this piece out because typically you can go from this expression to this expression, simplify the, the values on the fly. Be careful when you have something like this because you need to distribute. You don't write 2n plus 1. It's 2n plus 2. Um, and so that you need a little, a little bit of caution there. However, um, that's the process for finding a n plus 1. And that's going to come into play. We'll see this when we do our work with the ratio test. So having, having that uh, under, under our belt here, now let's see if we can discuss through the notions in, uh, revolving around uh, the ratio test. All right, so let um, a n... be a series, and one thing we require, um, none of the terms, none of the terms of the series is allowed to equal zero. If it is, uh, we, then we're not going to apply the ratio test. None of the terms are equal to zero. Now, um, then you compute The following, you compute the limit as n goes to infinity of 
absolute value, the ratio test requires absolute value, absolute value of A sub M plus one, which is what we just talked about, divide by A N, absolute value. So you compute the limit of the A N plus one term divided by the A N term, absolute value of that. And there are three possibilities, all right? Possibility number one, if this works out to be less than one, any value less than one, then the series converges. The series converges for any value less than one. That would include zero. Very often you get zero. That's less than one. If it's greater than one, the series diverges. And there's one other possibility. If you're not less than one or you're not greater than one, the other possibility is it could be that it's equal to one. If it's equal to one, what that means is there's no info. What it means is you use the wrong test. You need to go back and test the series using a different test. Typically, for our work, typically this will occur if you used the ratio test in a place where you should not have used it. And we're going to talk about that here in just a bit. But less than one means it converges. Greater than one, infinity would count into this category. If this works out to be infinity, certainly that's greater than one. It diverges, and if it's equal to one, there's no information. Now, here's the next piece. You will use the ratio test. Use the ratio test if the series involves if the series involves exponentials or factor and or and or factorials. If it has exponentials and or factorials. Exponentials would be things like, that would be things like uh, 2 raised to the n, or 5 raised to the 2n, or e raised to the n, or 3 raised to the n plus 1. Anytime you have an exponential, then the ratio test is the candidate. And or if you have factorials, you could have 2n quantity factorial, or just n factorial, or n plus 3 factorial. Anytime you have any factorials involved, then the ratio test is a good candidate to use. If there are polynomials, that is irrelevant. If it has factorials and also polynomials, ratio test. If it has exponentials and also polynomials, ratio test. If it has factorials or exponentials and also some radicals, still ratio test. If these are present, ratio test is the tool to use. All right. So, what if it does not have exponentials and it does not have factorial? What if it has only a polynomial divided by a polynomial? If you apply the ratio test when you have a polynomial divided by a polynomial, almost always it's going to give you one. And what that means is you shouldn't have been using the ratio test in the first place because we already know if you have a polynomial divided by a polynomial, what you should be doing is the limit comparison test. If you have an, uh, an algebraic function with a uh, third root of something or a square root of something over a polynomial, that is the limit comparison test. You don't use the ratio test in that scenario. If you do, you'll get a result. The result is going to be no information. So anytime this, the ratio test gives you one, there is no information, you should try a different test. Usually, that means it's going to be uh, the limit comparison test. For our work, that will typically be what happens. So, what we'll do now is we'll, we'll go through several examples of this, uh, show how the ratio test is, is, is uh, carried out. Uh, most students, the actual workings of this is not too much of a hassle. There are a few little fiddly bits that you need to be careful with 
some things that you have to be cautious about how the computations go. Once you understand them, they all tend to fall into very similar categories, and it's not too much of a hassle to work with the ratio test.